What's up, everybody? Um, this is part two in creating the beat for Stronger by Kanye West. Uh, sitting at my kitchen table again. This is the kitchen table series. I'm rocking my mint ginger tea because uh, I'm sick and because I like to rock the mint ginger tea when I'm doing hip hop. You know, if I'm doing drum and bass or something, I might rock a little chamomile. Uh, that's just how I roll, you know? <clears throat> All right, so what do we got so far? In part one, we learned how to first get this four bar phrase. Um, from Stronger, and I'm just going to play it one time. i got to hit record on my little wiretap device so I can capture this audio out of Pro Tools. Let's give a listen. It's four bars long. Here comes the fourth bar. One, two, three, four. Turn around. Okay, so that's what we got. And what we did uh, in part one was come up with the, the snare drum and the kick drum for this beat, which sounds like... Okay, now, uh, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that doesn't sound super awesome, professional, like, you know, badass beat. Well, um, there's some stuff that we can do to these drums. There's lots of stuff that we can do to these drums to make them sound a little more pimped out. Uh, and we'll be doing that in part three. But we're just going to keep moving on and get all of our elements of the beat together before we start tweaking and doing all that kind of fun stuff to really make it shine, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do uh, in this part is the chord progression. There's a synthesizer playing in that four bar phrase and the bass, okay? And to do that, we're going to have to do a little review of how we come up with chords. So first thing I'm going to do um, is make an instrument track for the chord progression. So I'm going to do command shift N for new track. I'm going to make uh, two, because I'm going to do a synth and a bass, stereo instrument tracks. Now for the bass, honestly, we could do a mono track. Bass is usually a mono, but eh, we'll take it. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on the names of these things to call them what they're going to be. So synth in keyboard, basically, if you're not familiar with the term synthesizer, we're just talking about a keyboard of some kind that can make a bunch of different sorts of sounds. And then a bass. That's B-A-S-S, -S, not B-A-S-E. Okay. So now we got to put an expand on this synth track. Um, so I'm going to put expand 2 on here. And uh, we got to pick a sound. Now the one that I picked for this, um, and you could pick something else if you want. I'm going to double click on the the little slot here, um, and I'm going to change it to uh, really any of these bright pads probably will work pretty well, but I picked the, let's see, where was it, basic fuzzy pad right there, and that's because I feel basically fuzzy right now, I'm sick, uh, but also because it sounds a lot like uh, the symphony piece, okay, all right, so let's close that up. We'll go to our MIDI editor window. Remember, control equals opens that up for you. All right, now I want to enter some notes on the synth, which means that I have to come up here to my track listing, and I have to enable the little show dot, the gray dot next to synth, turn the one off of kick. Okay, now I'm going to be entering notes just for the synth. Okay, all right, what notes do I enter? Well, um, we can try and do this by ear. A lot of times that's pretty tricky, so of course we can also go online. And um, I did that, and I found these chord progressions. So <clears throat> um, the chords, this is like the first hit that you get when you search for Kanye Stronger chords. This comes up. Um, it turns out that these chords are mostly correct. Remember we talked about this. Sometimes anybody can put these chord progressions up. Sometimes some of the chords are just wrong. And E flat minor right here. Remember that the little lowercase b means flat, the lowercase m means minor. That's correct. C sharp. Remember the little pound sign means sharp or the step above C, the half note above C. Correct. B. Eh, wrong. It's not actually B at this part in the song. It's A flat. How do I know? I'm, I've been doing it a long time. Trust me, it's A flat. Uh, <clears throat> This, B flat, for some reason they wrote the word flat instead of using the little lowercase b. Um, that's correct, okay? So the chords that we're looking for are E flat minor, C sharp, A flat, 
and B flat. Okay? All right. Let's do it. So <clears throat> remember that the first chord that I have to come up with is E flat minor. Okay. So um, let's zoom back out here. A uh, couple things before we do this. Um, I'm going to make my notes here. I'm going to make my grid one bar long. Now, why am I doing that? Because the notes that the synthesizer is playing are all whole notes, one entire bar long. In other words, he holds it down for the full four count. One, two, three, four, next chord. Okay? So I don't need anything smaller in my grid. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is find E flat. How do I find E flat? I find E, okay, which is right here. Now, how do I know that's E? You've got to just memorize the notes on the keyboard. You really only have to memorize at first one. The easiest one, I think, A, the note in between these second two black notes. Then I can count up the white notes in succeeding order, A, B, C, D, E. The black notes are the sharps and flats. E flat is the note immediately underneath E, which is right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna click right there, and there's my first note. Uh, let me solo this so that we can hear it. Okay, that's too high, so I'm gonna pull it down to E flat, a couple octaves down. Whoa, there we go. Okay, all right. So that's the range that I want to be in between three and four. Um, all right, so now how do I make the chord? The first thing I'm going to need is the first five notes in the E flat minor scale. Then I'm going to take the first, the third, and the fifth of those five notes, and that's my chord. So how do I get the first five notes of the E flat minor scale? Well, all minor scales start from their, the note that they're named after, like E flat in this case, and go up according to whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Those four steps will take me to the fifth note. Whole step, whole step, excuse me, back up, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Okay, so here we go. Here's a whole step, I skip a note. Here's a half step, I don't skip a note, I go to the next one. Here's another whole step, another whole step. Okay, there's my whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Now, to make it the chord, I get rid of the second and the fourth note, keeping the first, the third, and the fifth. Just double click to get rid of them. Get rid of the fourth one, gone. Get rid of the second one, gone. There's my E minor. Hey, sounds kind of like the song. Cool, all right, <coughs> let's keep going. Next chord, remember, was C sharp major. All right. Here's C, right here. Remember, it's one of the white notes. The white notes are all just named a letter. The black notes are all named that letter with a sharp or flat. So C sharp is going to be the note immediately above C, right there. All right, now I need the first five notes of the C sharp major scale. How do I get those? I go up from my starting note according to whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So here we go. There's a whole step, there's a whole step, there's a half step, there's a whole step. Okay, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Now get rid of the fourth, get rid of the second. And there's my second chord, let's listen. Oh, I know what you're thinking, never do that again. No promises. All right, now I need the next chord, which is A flat major, A flat major. Okay, so uh, now here's a little trick for you. Look at the shape of the minor and the major chord. They're always gonna have that shape. Every minor chord is gonna look like this. A note, two spaces, a note, three spaces, a note. Every major chord is gonna look like this. A note, three spaces, a note, two spaces, and a note. Okay? That's the only difference between the major and the minor chord. So since all major chords look like this, and I need to make A flat major, I can just make a copy of this and drag it to start on A flat. All right, I've selected it. I hold down Option. I make a copy. 
and I'm going to pull it down to A flat. Okay. Remember, this is A flat because it's the note underneath A. There's A, so that's A flat. Okay. And then finally, my last chord is B major. So again, I can make a copy of that major chord and drag it on to start at B. So I hold down Option. I drag and I start it at B, which is right there. Okay, let's listen. Hey, sounds good. Okay. All right, but there's one more change we've got to do. Just one. Um, and it's something called an inversion. And it has to do with this chord right here. Here's the general thinking. A lot of times, <clears throat> if there's a place that you can play one of the notes of a chord that keeps it closer to the other notes of the other chords that have already been played, a lot of times people will do it. Let me give you an example here. In this chord, we have this note right here, B flat, excuse me, A flat. That A flat could also be played an octave up. That's also A flat. And if I put it up there, an octave up, see how it's now kind of closer to the notes that have already been played? Okay, that's called an inversion. A lot of times it's used partly just so that players can actually not move their fingers as much, but it also sounds better 90% of the time. So this is what our chord progression sounds like with that inversion. Cool. There's my chord progression. Pretty easy, right? That's all there is to it. Okay, I'm going to hit save here just so that I don't... You know, something catastrophic happens and I lose all that. Okay, now I need the bass line. The bass line is pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> most of the time, not all of the time, but a lot of the time, the bass is going to be playing the bottom, the first note of each chord. Really, that's exactly what the bass is doing in this case. It's playing these four notes, descending down the first note of each of these chords. Now, technically, this is not the first note of the chord because, remember, it was originally down here, the lower one. But so we're just going to take these four notes to be our bass progression, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to copy them. Command-C to copy. Now I'm going to click on bass, uh, and I'm going to unclick synth. So now I have this dark gray. Why do I have dark gray instead of light gray? Because I don't have an instrument on it yet. So let's come up here, and let's put an instrument on our bass track. I'm going to put another expand, multi-channel, instrument, expand to. And we're going to pick a synth bass for this, which means a, not literally a actual string bass, but a bass played on a keyboard. Pretty common in hip-hop. Uh, synth basses, and I picked MKS Unisaw. MKS Unisaw, which sounds like something used in the construction industry, but in fact is a kind of synth. Okay, um, so let's go back to our MIDI editor window. We'll put away our expand to. Control equals to get our MIDI editor window, and uh, I have to put solo on to hear this. There's my bass, okay? All right, bass notes are pretty much going to hang out in this region down here between 1 and 2 on the keyboard. That's a good place to kind of put stuff, all right? So I'm going to uh, put my cursor at the beginning here, hit paste, uh, command V for paste, and there's the notes that I had from that chord progression. I'm just going to pull them down to, remember the first note is E flat, so I'm going to go down here to that E flat, or maybe that one. I'll start a little bit above two and go down. So now it sounds like this. Right on, that's actually starting to sound pretty much like the tune, right? Awesome, we've got our synth, we've got our bass. Um, in the next part of, uh, part three of the video, 
I'm like, uh, part, what comes after two? Oh yeah, three. In part three of the video, we're gonna do the remaining piece of this song and then do some sound sweetening. Now the remaining piece is just doing the uh, little Kanye, I need you right now, thing. What do you think, that was awesome, right? Um, and then some sound sweetening, which means putting some effects on things, doing some EQ, some reverb, some compression, some things that are gonna make it sound a little bit kind of more studio, big time, hip hop beat sounding. Cool, you can go on to part three.